Hello students of statics, this is Dr. Dan Baker and in today's video we're going to talk about another topic in our vectors chapter, uh, forces and other vectors, which is looking at position vectors. So these would be position vectors typically of the distance and how those also then relate to putting a force of a given magnitude along a line, which is a position vector. Okay, so that's where we're headed today. And instead of doing two separate videos, one being kind of an introduction and another one being an example, I'm going to fold these together today into kind of a single um, introduction slash example that will roll all together. Okay, so what we have for our system is we have a three-dimensional system. I'm going to pick my z-axis going vertically, and that will put my y-axis going over here to the right and then my x-axis will come out of the page. Okay, so there's our x, y, z, a right-hand coordinate system in that x cross into y is z. And we have two different points. One of these points is gonna sit down here. I'm gonna call this point A. And A has coordinates of two comma three comma negative 2.1. Okay, and all of those are in meters. So I could draw a ghost box for this point. We are below the xy plane by 2.1 meters. And so I could bring that up here to this point. And then I could project this over to my y and x axes here and here. I could draw the rest of that box I wanted to, at least the front faces looking something like this. Okay, so here's this point. It sits down below the xy plane. These distances, of course, this is going to be the negative 2.1. In the y direction, I had 3 meters. So that's along that front face. And then coming out of the page here, I had 2 meters. Okay. The other point that we're going to look at is point B. And point B is going to sit up here. And B has coordinates of negative 2.5 comma 1.5 comma 2.2 okay also in meters so to draw a ghost box there if this is a negative x value it's going to come basically out of this xy plane and then the y distance of 1.5 and the z distance of 2.2 2, right, so this was 2.2, 1.5, and a negative 2.5. I could draw the rest of that box coming here, across the back, angled over here to the x axis, something like that. Okay, it kind of gives me like the, the visible faces of those two boxes. Okay, so those are two points. And what we want to do first, we're going to do multiple parts on this problem, but part A is going to be to find a B vector. Now, the fundamental way to find a B vector is to take the final point minus the initial. And so to draw a B vector in this space, we're going to go from A up here to B. And we can say this is a B vector. And so we can take the final minus the initial. What we're talking about here are the components of the coordinates. Okay, and so we could write out that our AB as a vector is equal to, so we'll take BX minus AX, right? So let me just put here, this is going to be basically point B minus point A the components of those. Okay, so BX was negative 2.5, so negative 2.5 minus AX was 2, and that's going to be in the I hat, and then we're going to add to that the difference between the Y component terms, so that will be 1.5 minus the AY component will be 3, that will be in the J hat, and then our final term here is going to be in the z, or the k hat direction. And that difference is going to be 2.2 minus a negative 2.1. And that would be in the k hat. All right, so one thing we can notice here, we have a minus, a minus. And so that turns into addition. 
So we could write out that a b vector is equal to negative 4.5. I'll go ahead and use bracket notation here. So that's the x component. And then negative 1.5 in the j hat direction. And then finally in the z direction or the k hat is 4.3 positive. And those will all be meter terms. Okay, so that would give my answer for the vector a b. Once again, it's the final um, location, the final point minus the initial point. Now you can also think about this as changes. And this is actually the way that I prefer to think about this. So let me run over this one more time. So if we think about changes, you can go ahead and look at the drawing and whatever change that you see first. My eye actually looks first at the change in the z direction. So in this problem, we're starting down here to negative 2.1. And AB rises up in the Z direction up to uh, a positive 2.2. So we have a positive change of 4.3 meters. I'm totally fine in this class if you want to go ahead and write these as just changes by observing them versus writing out this full equation. Quite honestly, I see as many errors when people write out this full equation as it being a useful tool to get the right answer. So um, I guess so do two different ways. If you want to use the change in the points, then kind of cross check with these um, overall changes in this vector. The next thing we can take a look at is let's look at the X term right here. Right, so we started at a positive 2, and we ended up at a negative 2.5. So we're going back 4.5 meters in the negative x direction, hence this negative 4.5. And then the last term we'd have is in the y direction. I started at 3, and essentially I went back here. I didn't get these rectangles quite scaled correctly, because uh, this one on the bottom should be twice the width in the y direction as the one on the top. But from 3 to 1.5 is a negative 1.5. So that'd be that term there. Okay. So either way, either final minus initial or looking at the changes, both of those are outlined in our textbook. The next thing we're going to add to this system is a unit vector. Okay. So part B on our problem is to find the unit vector along a b okay so this unit vector along a b we're going to call a b hat anytime you see the hat above it essentially just means it is a unit vector along a line as opposed to a full spatial vector. Remember that unit vectors have a magnitude of one and have no units. Okay, so in order to find a unit vector AB, we have that AB hat is equal to AB vector, which we found in part A, divided by the magnitude. We can either write this as just AB. You could write this, also write this as AB vector magnitude. Either way. So now putting in these values, we have our components negative 4.5 comma negative 1.5 comma 4.3. And we need to divide that by the length of this vector. And to get the length, we use the Pythagorean theorem. So the Pythagorean theorem being the square root of the sum of the squares. So 4.5 squared plus 1.5 squared plus 4.3 squared ends up giving us 41. So this is the square root of 41. So it turns out that our a, b hat is equal to components of negative 0.703 comma, the y component is negative 0.234 comma, and a positive 0.672. This does not have units. Let me add a little note here. This is unitless. Just like all unit vectors are unitless. And let's go ahead and draw this vector as a purple vector on top here. So here would be my a, b, hat. All right, a couple things about unit vectors that you can cross check if you've got the, the correct thing going on. Uh, one of those is that any negative signs that show up in your unit vector will also be negative signs in your original vector. Okay, the signs of a unit vector much match the signs of the original vector components. The other thing is that the magnitude of these various, various components 
cannot be larger than one. So when I say magnitude, I mean positive or, or negative because we know that this unit vector has a total length of one. And so if any of the components are larger than one, it would violate that assumption of the overall vector being um, of one unit length. All right, so the next thing that we're gonna add on to here is going to be the a force vector. So let's say still laid upon this exact same line. So we're gonna call this a force along AB. And let's say that we know that this force has a total magnitude of 200 newtons. So essentially what we're gonna do is take this unit vector, which is pure direction, 100% pure direction here in the unit vector, multiply it times this magnitude of 200, and that will create the direction, or basically push the direction onto this magnitude and create a force vector with components that the total magnitude of those components is 200 newtons. Okay, so let's go ahead and go through that step. So for part C, we are going to find the vector components of F A B, which is equal to 200 newtons. And let me just go ahead and write this out in a little more correct form, because if we're talking about this as vector components, we could write this as F A B equal 200 newtons times my A B hat. Okay, so that's where we're headed here is to find the components of vector F A B. So we'll go ahead and match colors here. Um, so F A B was a red vector. We put force vectors in red equal to 200 times these components of the unit vector, uh, negative 0.703 comma negative 0.234 comma 0.672. And this will have units of Newtons. And so I'm going to multiply the 200 times each of those components of the unit vector. And we end up with FAB as a vector equal to negative 140.57. Our Y term is going to be negative 46. Point 86 and then our z component term is 134.32 and these will all again have units of newtons so that gives me the components again and once again the signs on each of those components match the signs on the original position vector and of course then also match the signs on the unit vector and that none of these components can be bigger than 200 right for an absolute magnitude because we know the total vector length is 200 you could cross check this if you wanted to and you're really just kind of backing out the work you just did but you could put these through the pythagorean theorem and find that the square root of the sum of these squares will give you 200. so the last part that we're going to do is we're going to find the coordinate direction angles also known as the direction cosine angles now the question here is that if you need to use either AB hat, AB itself, or FAB, if it would matter which of those three vectors that you used in order to find the coordinate direction angles of this line. Think about that for just 30 seconds or pause the video if you need to. It turns out that it would not matter whether we chose to use the unit vector, the position vector, or the force vector, that all three of those would give us exactly the same coordinate direction angles because they all share the same line in space. Okay, so fundamentally the easiest of these to pick turns out to be the unit vector here and the reason the unit vector is the easiest is you remember the equation for coordinate direction angles. You take the component divided by the total length of that vector. The total length of a unit vector is one. 
Okay, so it's quite easy to set up these coordinate direction angle equations with unit vectors. So let's walk through this. So part D is we want to find the coordinate direction angles of F, A, B, vector and we said we are going to use a b hat as all of our theta sub n our coordinate direction angles um, are the same as those for f a b vector so those three equations tell us that theta sub x is equal to the inverse cosine. So I move my cosine over to the other side. And remember in the top of this is going to be the component in that direction. So a negative 0 0.703. And then the total magnitude of that unit vector is one. So putting this in our calculator, we end up with 134.6 degrees. The theta sub y is the inverse cosine of the y component of the unit vector, which is negative 0 0.234. And divide by 1 gives us the same value. This will also be greater than 90 degrees, 103.6 degrees. And then theta sub z is the inverse cosine of the y component, which is 0 0.672. And this gives us a value between 0 and 90 degrees, 47.8. Now, the reason I was kind of highlighting um, between 0 and 90 or between 90 and 180 is I was just recognizing positive and negative signs on these terms. And fundamentally, if we have a negative component, we're going to end up with a um, direction cosine angle between 90 and 180 degrees. So just kind of a cross check as those are coming through. And so these would be our coordinate direction angles. Now to draw these, let's go ahead and draw these say from point A. Okay, so here is point A in space. And we had an axis system that had Y going over this direction. We had our Z going up this direction and our X was coming here out of the page. So given that axis system, we know that the coordinate direction angles will always be coming from the positive axes out to the vector. So our vector was going kind of in space back up this direction. It actually had a positive z, negative x, and actually a little bit of a negative. Actually, let me alter this. It has a negative y component. So let me get that in here. It's actually coming back here a little bit. So drawing these coordinate direction angles, we can draw that theta x goes from here back to here. So this is my theta sub x, that my theta y also greater than 90 degrees goes from y back over to our vector. Once again, this is vector um, f a b, that force along a b. And then theta z, the only one that was less than 90 degrees, comes from vertical. So this would be my theta sub z. So that shows me my three different direction cosine angles. Noting that this theta sub x, that f a b is kind of back behind the y z plane. Uh, it's kind of hard to draw that in two dimensional space, but giving us that angle of 134.6. So hopefully that helps you see how these different things work together, how position vectors can become unit vectors and then finally can become force vectors and then we can summarize those force, force vectors either with a component form or with a total magnitude and their coordinate direction angles. Hope you're having an awesome day.